Today I want to talk about self-care and why parents need it. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited that you guys are here and for those of you who are new, welcome. Welcome to our family, welcome to our community. On this channel, I like to talk a lot about communication strategies for parents, mindset, stress management, tools for social and emotional learning, and so much more. So today we're going to be talking about, as you can already see by the title, self-care. Now I already know what a lot of you are thinking, how can I even have time for self-care when I can't even get a moment's break and a chance to just catch my breath? I totally get it. I, I get why you're saying that there's just so much going on right now. So like I mentioned before, I know a lot of you are having a hard time trying to find space for self-care in your day-to-day -day routine. The truth is that parents have now so many roles and there are blurred lines between whether they're the parent or the teacher or the caregiver or the babysitter or everything else that parents would normally give out these roles, they have now been forced to cover everything. It's hard for parents to put themselves and actually find a moment in the day to put themselves first so that they can feel sane and know that they're contributing to better themselves every day. There is not enough space in the day for all of those dual roles to be filled and have time for self-care. But I wanna talk about that. What do you believe self-care is? What do you think about self-care? How do you define self-care or self-love for that matter? It's in that definition that we can create that space or we can redefine what is self-care for ourselves. So we have to find ways to do that during the day. But before we get into finding those ways and talking to you about what self-care can be redefined as, but I wanna to talk to you about the fact that research has shown that managing our own mental health has a trickle-down effect in our kids. So the more we fill up our cup, as the saying goes, the more we have to give. So if we're doing the best to better ourselves every day, it will have an effect on our kids. So when you find time for self-care, when you think about self-care, what do you do? What do you practice? After you have this routine or you do whatever it is that you wanna do, how do you feel afterwards? Bringing yourself up and putting yourself in positive spirits has a positive effect in your relationships. And I, I see it in myself. The more I have time to figure out what it is that I need to do, and the more I, I take time to look after myself, I'm in a better mood. I notice that. And I notice how that affects the interactions that I have with other people. So not only does it allow us to be more capable and more able to have those better interactions, it also allows us to set boundaries for ourselves. And what I mean by that is letting people know that you need space, that you need time. Letting your husband know or your spouse know that you need time to take a break for yourself and letting your kids know that as well. Another great thing about self-care is that it raises our boiling point. So what I mean by that is that those negative interactions that you see throughout the day won't create so much of an impact in your head. You'll be better equipped to handle those frustrating situations and be better equipped to handle those conflicts that you have. The way I like to think of it is, say you're going on a plane, and when they tell you that you need to put your oxygen mask before assisting others, it's true. We need to take care of ourselves before we can think about the relationships within our families. We need to be on the lookout for ourselves and we need to be putting on our own oxygen masks. So you're probably asking, how do we find the time? So instead of thinking about it as time, think about it as moments and actual practices that we can just add to our daily routine, whether that's carving out an extra five minutes before you wake up, whether that's taking those few moments to just take, do a stretch, warm your body up, feel good, do whatever it is that makes your body feel good, or even taking a break from your workstation if you're a work from home parent and actually sitting down to have a meal, allowing yourself to find space away from the task that you're doing and just think whether that's you being more stressed out or you contemplating life or just anything in general, you're allowing yourself that space and that time. So it's these small adjustments and these small things that you can add to your day rather than thinking about it as taking away from your day and taking away from things that need to be do, done. 
and I find this in my own life. I used to be the type to just bring my lunch to my workstation and be doing this task and then also trying to eat and then it just creates chaos in my mind and I'm trying to focus on this and trying to focus on that and there's no productivity happening. And what I started doing was taking a break, actually stepping away from everything that I'm doing and just being so focused on the one task that's in front of me. And then when I jump back into it, when I jump back into my work, I feel more productive. I feel more motivated. I feel like I've just cleansed myself. So you can do that too. And it allows yourself that freedom and that space to just take it in and just focus on you for one moment of the day because you really need that. We need to manage our own emotional well-being so that we can be there for the people that need us. And I've said this in probably every single video, but it really is so important, the amount of time that we spend taking care of ourselves. And it really does have a trickle-down effect. So it is really these small choices that we make on a day-to-day -day basis that can have such a profound impact, not only on that productivity, but our mood in general. And I know from personal experience, when I'm in a bad mood, everything I do in my head seems negative. Every interaction I have, every task I take on, it all is just built up frustration. But when I'm in a better mood, I'm more equipped to handle that task. Those setbacks and failures and frustrations don't hold me back. They just make me want to keep going. They keep me more motivated. When I'm in that better mood and I'm thinking about those positive things that are happening. And it's really all about a balance. So if you are struggling to find that time, wake up an extra five minutes early. Allowing you two to five minutes a day just makes so much of a difference. When I wake up and I have to deal with something negative or I just start myself off in a negative mood for the day, it affects my whole mood, it affects my productivity, it affects all the interactions I have with people. So I think that one of the best ways to do this is to start it off in your morning. It's also about finding something that works for you and your family. And a great way to think about it is having this new self-care routine, not just for you, but as a whole family. It will help boost your self-esteem and help your kids boost their self-esteem. If they're thinking about the importance of taking care of themselves and how much benefit it has on their structure of their day and their interactions with people and even your interactions with you as a parent, it really makes all the difference. So just to recap what we talked about in this video, we talked about self-care, how to find time for self-care, what self-care looks like to you and how you define it. We also talked about the simple ways and the manageable ways that we can add self-care into our daily routine and the benefits it has on a family dynamic. Before I end this video, I just wanted to quickly announce that Spots My One to One are opening up. And if you haven't seen the recent testimony I posted all on my social medias, and I also uploaded it to YouTube as well, I'm gonna leave that link down below. But one of my recent clients who just finished the program had such an amazing success story. And I really wanted to share that with you guys and see what benefits you guys could have out of coaching with me and working with me and what kinds of things you can get out of that. So if you haven't watched it, I really urge you to do so. In any event, you can always sign up for the free consult and I'm gonna leave that link down below as well and also the link to my website to learn more about that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and as always, I hope you got some use out of it. I know this was a short video and this background situation is different, but I am traveling, so I'm not in my normal workspace. So a lot of these videos will look a little different because they'll be filmed in different locations, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.